for hundreds of millions of years. An abundance of large animals, the megafauna, was a prominent feature of the land and oceans. However, in the last few tens of thousands of years, a blink of an eye on many evolutionary and biogeochemical timescales, something dramatic happened to Earth's ecology. Megafauna largely disappeared from vast areas, rendered either actually or functionally extinct. Only in small parts of the world do megafauna exist at diversities anything close to their previous state. And, in many of these remaining regions, they are in a state of functional decline through population depletion and range contraction. The Indian subcontinent was formerly part of Gondwana, a supercontinent formed during the late Neoproterozoic and early Paleozoic. Gondwana began to break up during the Mesozoic, with the Indian subcontinent separating from Antarctica 130 to 120 million years ago, and Madagascar around 90 million years ago during the Cretaceous. During the Ice Age, the Indian subcontinent was not covered in ice, as it was far too warm. However, the Himalayas to the north were indeed covered by ice during glacial periods. Evidence suggests that the Ice Age heavily affected the climate of prehistoric India. During the warmer interglacial periods, the ice would have thawed, and the subcontinent would have experienced more intense monsoons, with subhuman climates in otherwise arid areas, whereas the inverse would have taken place during the colder glacial periods, giving less intense monsoons and lower amounts of precipitation. This would have a definite impact on the fauna of India. In today's video, we will show you some of the most interesting extinct animals on the Indian subcontinent. Before we begin, make sure you hit the like button, subscribe to our channel, and click the notification bell for more amazing videos. With that being said, let's begin! There were no mammoths there, as they occurred further north, in Siberia and North America. But there were some much larger animals. Meet the Asian straight-tusked elephant. Paleoloxodon nematicus, an ancient relative of the Asian elephant first unearthed in India, though also known from remains in Japan. Their skull structure was also different from that of a modern elephant. Several studies have attempted to estimate the size of the Asian straight-tusked elephants, as well as other prehistoric proboscideans, usually using comparisons of thigh bone length and knowledge of relative growth rates to estimate the size of incomplete skeletons. Two partial thigh bones were found in the 19th century and would have measured 160 centimeters when complete. Volumetric analysis then yields a size estimate of 5.2 meters tall at the shoulder and 22 tons in weight. This makes Nematicus the largest land mammal known, surpassing the largest Indricotheres. Nematicus shared the subcontinent with other elephant species, such as Elephus hysudricus and the Asian elephant as well as the strange elephant relative, Stegodon. Some species of Stegodons are among the largest representatives of the proboscideans in the history of the Earth. Adult specimens can reach 4 meters, or 13.1 feet at the height of the withers, and 8 meters, or 26.2 feet in length, plus tusks 3 meters, or 9.8 feet in length. Despite possibly looking a lot like the elephants of today, Stegodon had a very remarkable feature. Its tusks could grow to be 10 feet long, about a third of a bus's length, and almost as long as its entire body. Unlike its more famous long-tusked cousins, the mammoths, Stegodon's tusks sometimes grew so close together that there wasn't enough space for its trunk to lie in between. Like modern elephants, Stegodon was probably a capable swimmer, and that may be how it colonized a number of islands throughout Asia from the Philippines to Japan. Some of those isolated populations then suffered from a phenomenon called insular dwarfism, in which big animals progressively get smaller after several generations living in small islands due to the limited space and available food. As a result, the Stegodon Sundari that lived on Flores Island, Indonesia, may have weighed as little as 660 pounds and was smaller than a water buffalo. It coexisted with another dwarf creature, this time our own relative, Homo florensiensis, also informally known as hobbits. The fossil record betrays the presence of familiar herbivores such as onagers, gazelles, nilgai, deer, ostriches, wild boar, wild water buffalo, aurochs, and guar in India's various environments, accompanied by some less familiar characters. Take, for instance, Sivatherium giganteum the strange moose-sized giraffe of India's Ice Age, 
Sivatherium resembled the modern Okapi, but was far larger and more heavily built, being about 2.2 meters or 7.2 feet tall at the shoulder, or 9.8 feet in total height, with a weight of up to 400 to 500 kilograms or 880 to 1,100 pounds. Sivatherium had a wide, antler-like pair of ossicones on its head and a second pair of ossicones above its eyes. Its shoulders were very powerful to support the neck muscles required to lift the heavy skull. On the larger end of the scale, the ancestors of the Indian rhinoceros were already present in the subcontinent, along with hippopotami from the genus Hexoprotodon, whose members bore an odd toothy grin not found in today's hippos. There have also been very interesting meat-eating animals in North America. Saber-toothed cats from the species Megantyrian falconery were evident in Asia's fossil record. Megantyrian was built like a large modern jaguar, but somewhat heavier. It had stocky forelimbs with the lower half of these forelimbs lion-sized. It had large neck muscles designed to deliver a powerful shearing bite. The elongated upper canines were protected by flanges at the mandible. The largest specimens, with an estimated body weight of 90 to 150 kilograms or 200 to 330 pounds, are known from India. However, this wasn't the only predator in the subcontinent, nor the largest. Fossil evidence reveals the presence of actual tigers, Asiatic lions, snow leopards, spotted hyenas, leopards, cheetahs, wolves, and a few other now extinct carnivores. Examples include the giant cheetah. The giant cheetah belonged to the same genus as our modern-day cheetah and probably looked very similar, but it was much bigger. At around 120 to 150 kilograms or 265 to 331 pounds, it was as large as an African lioness and was able to take on larger prey than its delicate modern-day counterpart. The giant cheetah was also adapted to fast running, but there's some debate on whether it could run as fast as the modern cheetah due to its heavier weight, which, according to some, probably made it somewhat slower. Others, however, have suggested that the giant cheetah, having longer legs and a bigger heart and lungs, could probably run as fast, or even faster, than the cheetah does today. Another very interesting animal is the Pachycrocota brevirostris a relative of the spotted hyena. The giant, short-faced hyena Pachycrocota breviostris, which stood about 1 meter or 3.2 feet at the shoulder and may have weighed 150 kilograms or 330 pounds, was the largest hyena day ever existed and the one that perfectly embodied the distinctive bone-cracking adaptations of this mammal family. It probably was a small pack hunter of large animals, up to deer size and occasionally larger, and also scavenged for food. Possibly it preferentially did the latter, because it was a very heavy set animal not built for chasing prey over long distances. In this aspect, it would have differed from the spotted hyena of today, which is a more nimble animal that, contrary to its image as a scavenger, usually kills its own food, but often gets displaced by lions. Primates found in the subcontinent were very similar to what we find there today, with a few additions. Gelatus, nowadays found only in small areas of East Africa, were also present in the Indian subcontinent, alongside prehistoric relatives of baboons from the genus Procynocephalus. That's all for today. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share it with your friends. You can also leave a comment with what you would like to see in the following videos. Thanks for watching. See you next time.